So, Sarah, thanks so much for being with us. Let's start with you on the equity side of here. What did we learn this week out of these markets? Well, markets churn during the week. There seems to be uplifts whenever there's some sense that the Fed will back off. But it's very unlikely. There is, um, there's so much need to crush inflation now, given what a terrible tax it is, particularly on low-income people. And, and on the other side, on the bond side, Chris, what did you take out of the week? Uh, that we're at 2.9 and heading to 3% on that two-year rate. And the curve is going to be flat. I don't know if it's going to go inverted. I already did that earlier, David. So we've got the signal that a recession is somewhere way out there. But... You know, bonds are going to keep backing up. The Fed is tightening. The facts are the facts. The Fed will tighten throughout 2022. Well, so we've been told by a Chair Powell, Chris, that uh, he has the tools necessary to deal with inflation. Does he? Not this type of inflation. I mean, his only tool is, to, is raising rates. And this is the kind of inflation that, that doesn't have a direct impact. It's a supply problem. Uh, it's crude oil. It's commodities eventually, but it does mean that he's going to have to raise them consistently and a whole bunch higher than I think people are anticipating. So yeah. rough yeah, yeah. road ahead. I'm very concerned. Yeah, I would agree with that. He has to he has to lower demand in order to keep prices under control. And that's going to require, I mean, we've just started not to mention the shrinkage of the Fed balance sheet. And there, other central banks other than China's are all doing this too. This is a global tightening. So Sarah, well, Sarah much when you say slow demand, that means slow down the economy. It if does. you're owning stocks, where do you hide? Yeah. They, well, I don't believe in raising cash because it's one thing to raise, another to put it back into the markets at the right time. That's why market timing is so difficult. And our institutional clients and our funds expect us to be fully invested. So the key here is to be diversified and use a lot of risk metrics in order to know just how much volatility you're likely to anticipate. And then attempt with the better companies to be defensive. We just outperform as markets swoon. But these are cycles. And then we'll cycle back up again. At that point in time, we need to be in stocks that would be, take advantage of the impending recovery. We just haven't gotten to the bottom yet. Chris, to go back to Sarah's point, you've got to slow the economy. Uh, hook it up with the jobs numbers we got on Friday, because that didn't look like the economy is slowing very much. How much does the economy need to slow? We heard from Bill Dudley, the former Fed uh, chair, president here in New York, and he said that actually we've got to go way above 4% on unemployment to get the inflation back down to 2%. No, you're on the point, David. It, we still you got to realize the amount of stimulus that the Fed and Congress kicked into uh, the U.S. economy during the pandemic. And we're still living off of that buzz. I got to tell you that, you know, balance sheets of average consumers are still, their, their checking accounts and their bank accounts are still cash rich. They're not spending that money. They're saving some of it. But, you know, you've got a strong employment market. You've got 5 million people who think they're wealthy enough to not work. I mean, that's just amazing to me. They've got to come back in the market. Uh, that's probably going to mean uh, higher wages to attract them back, which is more inflation. So you're right. The Fed's got to raise rates. Uh, we've got a long way to go. That's why I don't think a recession is imminent. But we've got a lot of problems that we have to deal with before we're in a recovery mode. And David, housing is the most lagging of economic indicators. We should be looking at, ha uh, not housing, we, sh we should be looking, for example, at housing. Employment is lagging. Housing, orders, profit sort of in that order and uh, and it's all coming that's what's so interesting that these markets have derated by valuation multiple but the profit hit hasn't happened yet that's the other shoe to drop well what about that because you've talked about earnings expectations are they coming down the way they should given where we're headed sarah very likely and again that gets to the point of uh for chris's question where do you hide well, you obviously want to be in the stocks that will incur the least earnings downgrades. And that's typically those at this point that are more defensive, less economically cyclical. But we, again, it's critical to be prepared to invest in those that are cyclical when we are at some point at the at the bottom of economies and we're not there yet. And you, that's why it's hard to know exactly where it will be. And the whole point of active management is to start, you know, we, we use a ranking system. So we know how stocks are from a risk-adjusted return basis. And as the cyclical stocks look more and more attractive, they'll start working their way into the portfolio and into the fund. 
So it's a it's a gradual process right now, defensive, and then over time, over the next several months, probably well into 2023, much more cyclical. Chris, you said it's not imminent. Uh, recession is not imminent. What do you mean by imminent? What do you think about 2023, 2024? Yeah, I got to be careful when I use words that are vague on timing. Uh, Chair Powell did that on inflation, and it really threw us all for a loop. <laughs> so. I just don't think we're going to see it in the second quarter or the third quarter during the summertime, but I am worried about the fourth quarter next fall uh, because these uh, the cash and consumers uh, accounts, they're going to use it up quick, especially at these inflated prices that people are having to pay. So you know, employment is strong. And as Sarah said, earnings are OK. But listen to what CEOs are saying in their earnings calls. They're very cautious. They can't push this inflation in their base prices on the consumers, they won't buy it. So at some point, we're going to start to see weaker economic numbers and then eventually earnings downturns. And I don't think Wall Street's pricing that in, David. It's not paying attention to just the facts surrounding the market in this point in the economy. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, there are more earnings downgrades ahead. But, Sarah, on this question of the cash on the balance sheet of the households, they do have a lot, over $2 trillion, I saw reported yet again this week. Uh, Chris says it's not going to last that long. How long can that continue through? And do we want it to continue through very long? Because the longer we keep up with inflation, doesn't that mean the harder the Fed's going to have to come down in the markets? Very likely, yes. The more persistent it is, the more psychologically it becomes embedded in how people operate. And that's the vicious wage price spiral, something we haven't seen for 40 plus years. I mean, it's, it's, nobody wants to see this. So that's why the Fed has to move aggressively. It just, this is going to be quite different from the 70s because sure, we have consumers with some money. Maybe they will in turn carry higher savings rates with so much uncertainty out there. We also have banks with just a wash in reserves. And the problem with that is that means that they'll continue to lend. That's that velocity of money. Money just keeps circulating in the economy and which is counter to what the Fed wants, which in turn makes the Fed have to be even more aggressive. And Chris, we've gone through this entire discussion without talking about Ukraine and what's going on with the war on the ground in Europe, much less what's going on with China. You talk about uncertainties. It goes beyond inflation. It goes beyond the economy. Yeah, you're going to keep me up at night again, David. There's a long list of risks surrounding this market. Uh, it begins with the economy, but geopolitics are huge. Uh, and, you know, the whole issue with Ukraine, that's the beginning of inflation. We had inflation from the supply, surplus, the supply chain shocks, but now it's continued on because of the oil shutdown, as you said, with the lead in. Uh, and now food problems because of the lack of wheat coming out of Ukraine and Russia. You're going to have higher food costs across Europe, uh, and that's going to lead to inflation even in the USA. So uh, there's a litany of problems surrounding this market on the long term as well as in the short term. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart at this point. 